Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Hey, Bob, you know, with the state of rock radio, do you feel like shows like yours and the CMS and others are going to have to carry the torch of metal? Uh, you know, metal's always been an underground movement, but do you think it's up to uh, those kind of shows to actually get the music out to the people? Absolutely. They're the only shows doing it. You know, who else is playing Iron Maiden, Hollow Be Thy Name? This is ridiculous. And now, here is your host. <laughs> I guess that's going to be my intro for now on, huh, Jake? The Inside Metal Show here on T-Radio V. Are you there, Martin Popoff? Where art thou? I think we lost our guest, Martin Popoff, via Skype. All right. Oh, there he is. Hey, Martin, yeah, there's, there's my man, Martin Popoff, the professor, the heavy metal professor. I don't think anybody in this world... Knows more about heavy metal than this man here on the Let's, screen. So, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, how you doing, Martin? What's going on with you, man? You're chilling out in uh, Canada, right? Yeah, I'm doing okay. working away. Um, I've got uh, well, Pan Am games here in Toronto. So we're, we're going to a bunch of that and uh, just working on various books. Just got back from Finland. Yeah. Um, what were you hey, doing out in Finland? Well, it was a it was a presentation there on my new book, uh, Who Invented Heavy Metal. Um, it was a it was a big metal conference. They've been doing these. I've been to a couple of them. Uh, they had one in Dayton. They had one in Bowling Green. There's talk of doing one in northern Brazil. But it was a whole week of conferences. Uh, Scott Ian from Anthrax was there. Alex oh, Golnick wow. was there. I was a keynote speaker, so I presented on Who Invented Heavy Metal. Various other academics, Dina Weinstein, and just a whole week of just crazy bizarre topics on uh, on heavy metal all right we'll, we'll talk about that uh, upcoming book who invented heavy metal that is an upcoming book you got going on right i uh, know it's out now it's been out for about a month or so oh, okay cool cool well we're, we're going to talk about that in a bit um yeah i mean finland they're they're like that's like the, it seems to be the metal capital i'm actually going to be doing a lecture for the university of uh helsinki they got actually a heavy metal course at their university and I'll be doing that. Nice. Yeah, that's right. I did hear about that. And, and Joel, Joel, Joel McGuire well. doing it. I mean, this, this is all the same people. This is the University of Helsinki that this conference was at. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. They, they were mentioning the conference. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't I, I couldn't make it out for that. But I'll be doing a Skype a lecture coming up for any of you that want to check it out. I don't know if they're going to have a Skype address to uh, but it'll be uh, uh, strictly for the uh, the uh, the university. And it'll be regarding the movies, the uh, Inside Metal movies. So. Uh, cool, yeah. yeah, it'll yeah. Be a you lot did a great job with those. I mean, I, I can't believe how detailed and how much I learned from them uh, as well. It's just such a rich, rich history that I, I didn't know all that much about. So, well, dude, yeah, that yeah. that was my goal. If I could if I could present something that even Martin Popoff doesn't know about in the realm of hard rock and heavy metal, I must have done something right, right? You did, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you know, if if really if you weren't living uh, in LA, you wouldn't uh, have known about a lot of these bands from the late '70s into the '80s. It wasn't until you know, obviously, that the Quiet Riots and the Motley Crues and the Rats really broke that they yeah. attained you know, kind of international. A status. I mean, you had you know obviously bands like Legs Diamond and and, and a few others, and of course Van Halen, uh, that had yeah. made a name for themselves. But uh, yeah, unless you were in, in L.A. at that time, um, you didn't realize how big these guys were on the on the local circuit. So I think it was yeah. important to get to get uh, document that, and I would love to document. Uh, you know, I'm I'm hoping we could. I I would love to do one on the new wave of British heavy metal inside the new wave of British heavy metal. So we're it's just interesting. You mentioned that because I'm actually doing uh, just like my Who Invented Heavy Metal book, which is time line with quotes i think i'm going to do a two-part book on the new wave of british heavy metal so I've, I'm, I'm kind of deep into it already um so it, it's just coming out that i've got so much uh, archival interview footage that i think it's going to be a beginning of the new wave of heavy metal and then the the death of the new wave of heavy metal mm. so uh, it'll be it'll be lots and lots of uh, quotes uh you know, laid out with a with a strict timeline. Uh, you know, including a lot of stuff from the seventies, with a whole idea about who caused the new new wave of heavy metal. Like, like what were the metal things going on, say seventy five to seventy nine, that helped cause that whole thing to happen? Very much like the movies you did. I mean, there there was a lot of great, uh, you know connections made between uh you know what was going on to ramp up to this big metal thing and you you covered that very accurately in that in the movie so 
Absolutely. And I think it was kind of similar uh, in a way where they were kind of battling the, the punk movement, which obviously took precedence and was all over the media, the punk and new wave stuff that was going on in Britain. And that yeah. started, uh, you know, uh, happening in, in, in Los Angeles, too. And that was what a lot of these bands were, were up against um, at the time, you know, and uh, fortunate for, you know, bands like Van Halen. They were they broke out just before that that scene happened. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And of course, the second title that we're um, going to be putting out in uh, September, which is looking fantastic. John Bush is doing the narration as we speak, and cool. it's going to be called the L.A. Metal Scene Explodes. And that will lead into it. That'll be from roughly 1982 to 1986. And that'll Sweet. really cover um, and, and it'll show how much the new wave of British heavy metal had made a. Uh, uh, it, it, an influence and an impact on the LA scene from bands like Def Leppard to, you know, Motorhead and Iron Maiden and, and even the more underground bands, of course, you know, Metallica were greatly influenced by those oh, bands. Oh, for sure, also. because I always maintain, you know, you and I have talked about this many times in the past, but I, I maintain, like, there's a great importance to to what Brian Slagle did with those Metal Massacre samplers and, and super fans like Lars Ulrich. Um, Absolutely. Who, who brought this music over there and ignited a metal scene really, um, you know, through 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 bringing all all of these imports in and and that stuff manifesting itself on those early metal uh, metal massacre samplers so you know really um, a lot of those early bands you know the other term we use is original power metal which is an american thing it's not a it's not a a finnish and german thing really power metal first started being used about these these uh you know blood and guts blue collar heavy metal bands um right. that that essentially grew up from from the whole metal blade um stable so um so yeah, I mean that's 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 really uh, you know a huge connection there. The new wave British heavy metal essentially ignited you know a, a lot of that whole LA scene. I thought absolutely, and we talk about all that. Of course, Brian Slagle is a part of this. Lars Ulrich is a part of this, and we get, go into deep about you know the metal massacre and and how much the new wave of British heavy metal influenced not just you know Metallica and the Armored Saints and and, and the bands like that, but even the bands uh, you know Black and Blue and and Pandemonium and other bands that came you know, uh, from other areas into L.A., you know, they were doing covers of, of uh, New Wave of British Heavy cool. Metal songs before before doing yeah. all that stuff. So, yeah, a big, big uh, influence, obviously. And, um, you know, a funny story about uh, power metal. I remember a story that Ron McGovney, on, uh, he made the first uh, Metallica, you probably heard this story, uh, business cards. And he put Metallica, power metal. He just yeah. thought it sounded cool. And Lars yeah. and the guys, what, what the hell is power metal? What is this? And, you know, yeah. he said, I ah, just kind of, it sounds cool. Power metal, you know, and I think a lot well, of people. It makes sense, right? I mean, Absolutely. you know, Pantera had an album called Power Metal. Right. I mean, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that was powerful metal. And what we call power metal now is actually, you know, what we call Philly Sleeves ballerina metal. It's not that powerful. Yeah, you know, it's more it, that symphonic it, 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 metal, sure. which is interesting because I remember which which you were a, a big part of. If people don't know, I'm we're, we're going to get into your history a bit, uh, Martin. But uh, as well as being a fan, fantastic author who uh, wrote so many metal books, I, yeah, I've got just a just a very few of them here that uh, we're going to show. But uh, you also been a longtime journalist, and you were involved in the uh, Metal Evolution series with uh, Sam Dunn, um, Sam Dunn, and uh, his partner. Um, Scott McFadden. Scott, Mc, Scott McFadden. Uh, Mc, McFadden, right? Fadden, yeah. Fadden, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you guys, uh, you put, uh, oh, I was going to say about the power metal thing. It, it's funny going back to that. Um, it, it shows how much that, uh, where the power metal now is, like you said, that European power metal. And uh, uh, not too many people um, refer to it as, as, you know, how, how you said the original, you know, Metal Blade kind of uh, uh, yeah. bands that, that came out. Why do you think that is? What made that switch over? Search is it was a perfect example. I mean, you know, in, even bands like Accept and Dio were considered part of that whole thing. They were the they were the upper echelon, the Absolutely. you know the metropolitan bands. Sabotage, yeah. I always think you know I, we used to joke and call that stuff on Metal Blade all those secondary bands poverty metal. <laughs> right <laughs> and uh and it, it was just all these guys that looked you know they had they had the leather and chains on they were like they were like the blue collar version of judas priest and, and yes i mean all of that was that, that is the the roots of power metal so to speak absolutely absolutely well talk about your books a little bit what you got going on now um 
you've done so many books. You know, you've done books, obviously, on, on, on all the greats, you know, the Deep Purples, the Black Sabbath, Judas Priest. I want to get into some of your secondary books, which I, re- I, I don't know if we, uh, we could refer to them as secondary books, but some of the stuff that you do apart from just, you know, the typical bio kind of books, which I love. And I tell you, the uh, Ye Old Metal series, I've got one of them up here. This is 1978 where I think it's so cool because you cover all the underground uh, bands that I used to collect, uh, you know, these albums going to use, scouring used record stores all over. And it's just so cool to read through some of these books. And, and I go, wow, dude, I bought that album back in, you know, you know, 80, yeah. 81 or whatever. And uh, but you got a whole great series of the ye old metal. Yeah, uh, let me let me see if I got a couple of those handy here. I mean. Uh, what do you you've got 78 there so we've I got, got uh, yeah i just picked out one uh, from from my uh, bunch of them there's mark riel from ride on the cover of 1979 no was there's, that guy that uh, was guy speranza correct all right uh sorry yes yeah, yeah what did i say guy speranza here's uh, here's brad delp on the cover of 76 there's 78 the first one uh goes back uh 68 to 72 we got david byron We've got a great Alice Cooper shot on the cover of 73 to 75. And we've got uh, Frank DeMito from Angel on the cover of 1977. Great guy. He's a part of the movie, the Inside Metal movie. And I I love that. I love the fact that you you cover that because there's really no books or uh, really anything that talks about those those, uh, great underground eras of music. Yeah, I mean, the idea there was that, you know, these are albums I grew up with. I had a great curiosity for, you know, falls into my lap eventually that I can interview some of these guys and you know I pursue a few other ones god I must have interviewed three or four blood rock guys I mean every single guy from the band Derringer and did like a huge chapter on sweet evil so uh, Ram Jam had a massive sure. curiosity about Ram Jam Angel of Black course Betty. so so these are bands that I I didn't think you know I would ever be able to write a full book on and then I started thinking well I love writing these these encapsulated 3 to 5000 words on an album at a time and then I thought, okay, let's start. Let's start organizing them into years. So that so so far there's six of them, and it ends with 1979, and and now we're into the 80s. You know, I've I've also written a lot of these things where I put them out as 99 cent eBooks on Zunior.com. So I've got you know 30 or 40 of these I think now uh, that go into the 80s with Sabotage and Merciful Fate and Savage and Trouble and Witchfinder General and Angel Witch and Holocaust and so. You know, they, these chapters are available for 98 cents as ebooks, but, you know, eventually I'd, I'd like to put them in print as well and just keep the series going because I love series. You know? Yeah, I do too. We're going to get all into that. We're going to get into your self publishing, which you've got a, a whole great mecca of self published books. We're going to take a quick break now and then we're going to get back with my man Martin Popoff on Inside Metal on T Radio V. Hi. Brad is actually here right now. <laughs> I don't have the white disease. What's Whoa! The- <laughs> give, give me, yeah. I want to see like some a tiny intro. Got, got, give me some boom. Got, give me some boom, bro. This is going to make us money. Ask Robert who his favorite celebrity animals are. <laughs> the animal lovers. Sorry. All right, everybody, animal whip your animal. out. Everybody whip it out. We'll be right back. See, now it's... Just- Let's do a couple things. Ready? Action. Or who oh, may monsters. Be monsters. You. <laughs> oh, that means me. Take it. It's God, take your all the unreal mind. <laughs> to be honest with you, I like being down there a little more because my head was. <laughs> <laughs> Candy corn monsters, boom! Hi, I'm Kristen Renton, and I don't know what I'm saying. We're this one's world, world animalist. Right here we go. Oh, I'll just. Oh, I'm real. Just on a real wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you fake it, I. Contest on night calls and they were all peeing everywhere. Everyone's like, "Can I get another diet coke?" Yeah. <laughs> we want to do more. I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are between the sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m. TRadioV.com. TRadioV. That's right. It's TRadioV. Radio in T.
What is that face? <laughs> she wants to see our hands. That's radio. N. T. V. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> We're back, T Radio V Inside Metal Show with the Metal Professor Martin Popoff. You like hey. that title, Metal Professor? Absolutely, I'll take it. <laughs> so, who was that band? Uh, Black Sabbath. Of course. The Priest. That's right. One of my favorite songs with Ian Gillen. What a great vocal performance on that, huh? Very cool. <laughs> so we were we were talking about your books, you know. Uh, 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 Apart from your great uh, bios that you do, and we were talking about the Ye Old Metal series, but you've got this knack of writing. I mean, you are so meticulous when it comes to uh, your, your skills as a writer, and you've done these great guides. I mean, one of my favorites is the top 500 heavy metal albums of all time that you have done. And then, of course, you've got the uh, Collector's Guide to Heavy Metal. You've got a couple of these series. This one is from the 90s, uh, Volume 3. That goes into the 90s where you go through pretty much every single hard rock and metal album that came out during that period, which is just, it, it blows my mind how you have the time to write that. And, and the most mind blowing is this heavy metal record price guide, uh, the gold mine. It's actually um, this, this you did for gold mine magazine, correct? Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I just uh, shake my head when I think how much work that was because it was more or less done pre-internet. It was done sort of 97 through to 2000 as the internet was just ramping up. Mm. So all of that information was culled from all those old archaic sources uh, to put that together. So it was a ton of work, and it and it wasn't done in the in the in the gold mine sort of format that they have there. So it's sort of a standalone thing, and I kind of lost the files in a crash, and I don't think they have them. So it's it's almost something that that may never happen again. But I, I just love it because it's you know forget the prices, put that aside. What it is is it's essentially. Um, a book that catalogs with catalog numbers, you know, Absolutely. tons of the vinyl that ever came out. And it's a great reference book, you know, for me uh, as well. And it's, it, it blows my mind that you could uh, put this together, especially pre-internet. I mean, that's it's uh, unbelievable the amount of research. I yeah. mean, nowadays, you know, you just, you know, people just pop up, you know, Wikipedia, whatever, get, you know, to find out dates and whatnot of certain albums. But the research is, uh, this had to have taken. I want to go to a, a, another book, obviously, that you didn't write, but I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, book. A good friend from uh, England. Did you see this a book on Neat Records, Neat and Absolutely. Tidy? Absolutely. I got it and I've started reading it. I love it. I'm, I'm, so co I'm, I'm so glad that people are doing this kind of research. Absolutely. And putting this kind of when John yeah. Tucker, uh, the, the author of this book, great guy, he sent this to me. I was thinking, well, Wow, this is something that Martin Popoff should have done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, this is a fantastic. Well, of course, I, I love this. This neat records was probably the premier, I guess you would say, new wave of British heavy metal uh, record label for the underground bands. Uh, they they released singles and they, you know, exposed, you know, Tigers at Pantang, Raven, you know, of course, Blitzkrieg, Venom, uh, you know, some bitches sin. I mean, so many of those early releases uh, were were a neat records uh, and uh a uh, fantastic book, so I highly recommend it from John Tucker. Another yeah. British, um, uh, good friend of ours, British journalist and author, Mr. Joel McIver, who uh, you're always battling it out between you and Joel, who could put the more books out. And it seems like, I think you're ahead these days, Martin. Yeah, I guess I'm ahead. I've got 50. <laughs> I guess I've always been ahead. But I, I think he does kind of a better job. I think he's running his career better, and he, and he picks and chooses his projects better, and and I just, I, I just admire the guy. I, I like, I like what he does. I mean, he's he's been kind of quiet, but normally when Joel's quiet, that means there's something pretty major coming down the pike. So I, I, I totally assume that that's the case. Yeah, he's got some few things going on. In fact, we're gonna have Joel on now that we could, I could see that we're we're able to get the Skype thing going, which seems to work good. I'd love to get you and Joel and Monty Connor get those old school. Yeah, of course, people that remembers my old podcast, the Shockwave Skull Sessions. You know, Martin was a regular on the show, as well as Joel MacGyver and Monty Connor from uh, Nuclear Blast. Now, of course, people remember him from Roadrunner. And uh, we still go through these email threads where we'll argue yeah. and bash. And uh, I love it. It's, uh, you know, we're all. Uh, Bob, so uh, of course, speaking of Monty. Yes. You know, the, the cover of my newest book, Who Invented Heavy Metal. Oh, he took that picture, right? Of a modern day Black Sabbath from the first so, album. He did the pilgrimage to the mill that's on the cover of the first Black Sabbath album. Right. And we're just 
chatting one day and he's and I said you know what let's you know that's kind of the record that essentially invents heavy metal let's put that on so he sent me five or six shots and I had my layout guy Eduardo kind of make it as close to the uh, you know the the old the, the actual album cover as possible but right. that's so that's a shot that Monty took you know and it and hasn't Monty, changed much and that was just uh, from a few years ago right uh, yeah, well, just recently, it's just like a tourism thing that he did. He just went there and said, I got to go see that mill. <laughs> That's Monty, man. So, yeah, yeah, from 1969 or whatever, when the original picture was shot to recently, it, it's, I mean, you, I mean, when he showed those the pictures, I knew right away. He took like a distance pictures and everything surrounding it is different. But the actual yeah. mill looks almost ex exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah, crazy. Sure. Crazy. But we'll, we'll try to get him on and get get a, a lot of you guys on again. Try to get a skull sessions thing going, because I love those debates we always have. And of yeah. course, Martin, I mean, the thing that I admire and respect about you, although I don't agree with you all the time, as you well know, but uh, you're very opinionated when it comes to, um, you know, your, your, your book writing, but it, it, in a very good way. I think that's something that is really missing in uh, today's journalism, especially music journalism, where, you know, everything is about praise and, you know, kissing everyone's ass and this and that. I mean, you bring up stuff that um, I think is, is uh, you know, is, is well needed. And in fact, you, you got a little, uh, I heard you got a little altercation with our old buddy, uh, Nikki Six on a new Motley Crue book you uh, uh, just put out, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I've uh, through through this per, um, this publisher, Backbeat Books. We've done these really nice coffee table books. Uh, one on Iron Maiden, one on Ozzy, and the hair metal um, one. You they're put like out. timeline with quotes, color throughout. Beautiful book. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, it's essentially. I feel like it's an academic pursuit where I'm where I'm laying out everything that's happened in the life of these bands, and I'm using quotes from all my own interviews with these guys, and. You know, I happen to know that Nikki has my Iron Maiden one, and he really likes it. I mean, I suppose he doesn't really remember who I am, but we've interviewed many times, and I've met him in person a couple times and had a lot of phoners and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, uh, he just took uh, umbrage and, uh, you know, d didn't didn't really want this book to come out. So he uh, he called me a scumbag, I guess, in Twitter, and then there, there was a big flame war going on between all these fans. You know, I guess... I guess some of them started saying, how dare this guy write a book on Motley Crue, which is very weird to me. That That's like, yeah. what, you've never seen books written on bands before? Um, but then, then the tide seemed to shift, and everybody was kind of like jumping on him, and I tried to stay out of it. And, and you know, I understand it's a little bit of that whole, that whole you know, I want to control my image, and sure. I want to control what gets out there. And, uh, you know, they have The Dirt, which is just the greatest book that will ever be on Motley Crue. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, that's kind of where it stands. I mean, it just, uh, he just got upset about, about the thing. I, I hope when he sees it, he'll realize that it, that it comes from, you know, uh, a, a, a space of respect. There's a lot of stuff on 6am because what I like doing with these books is it's the entire family. So Vince's solo career is in there and Tommy's solo career. There's Methods of Mayhem pictures. Right. There's a lot of 6 a.m. stuff. There's 6 a.m. pictures. There's a, there's James Michael is quoted. So, um, you know, I, I think I think when he sees it, he's going to realize that, uh, you know, it was it was a really nice project. It's not it's not a real digging in the dirt kind of thing. I mean, any any dirt that's in there, obviously, this band has a lot of dirt. Um, but it's mm. it's their own words and, and just kind of a matter of factly mentioning, you know, certain things that go on throughout the career. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, it was stupid when I saw that. I mean, I, I understand you want to protect your name. But in this day and age, everything going on with YouTube, people, you know, filming concerts from their phones and putting it all on the Internet the next day and everything going on. What you're doing, these are your own interviews. You're not plagiarizing anything. These are interviews you put together, the band, and like you yeah. said, in their own words, and you wrote a book that's, you know, giving them publicity, and he's coming down on you. I thought, what what the fuck is wrong with this guy? You know, before, yeah. I'm, I can understand if he reads a book and there's something that he disagrees with or he's saying that you're making something up, then to go at it, but just to, uh, you know, flat out say, oh, another asshole trying to capitalize on Motley Crue's career. I mean, give me a break, dude, you know? I mean, yeah. get, there's enough people out there that you could get on, you know, that are trying to do that, put, posting stuff on YouTube and whatever, but here's a legitimate author and you've, you've authored, you know, numerous books on bands much bigger than Motley Crue. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and you've got nothing but praise. So I, I just thought that was, uh, 
you know, it's just a yeah. A I ridiculous think he'll song. like it. I think I I I always thought that him being such a music fan. I know he's a great music fan, and and, and you know, for that reason alone, I thought you know he would like it because he would like sort of the contribution to music scholarship. But the other thing I think he'll realize is that you know I happen to know. Partly, and you know, even more so, and, and in an enriched way from going through the whole Rock Icons um, episode with him. Sure. Like I worked on a lot of those questions and a lot of the research, uh, you know, that we that we got Nikki, like like you know, helping at least, um, you know, it, it was it was a group effort of, of sort of noticing the storyline. But basically, the storyline, and it also comes out through this book, is how much of an architect of the band and a songwriter and everything that Nicky is. It's quite unusual that the bass player and not and, you know he's not the lead singer either, um, is the guy who's really the architect of the image and the songwriting, um, and and is kind of the guy who who makes sure things gets done in the band. And sure. and he's going to notice that through the book too. So you know I don't know I I think uh, I think after all this he'll he'll realize that. Uh, you know, it's it's just a great contribution to Motley Crue history. Well, let's see if he gives you a formal apology on Twitter. Yeah, that's what I want to see. Well, cool. See. Well, you know, speaking of of, of which, you know, of, of course, uh, a lot of people know Banger Films. You know, the, the same people that did Metal Evolution, uh, which you are a part of. Uh, you did the uh, great Rock Icon series. I know you did. Uh, you know, it had like Ted Nugent and Dave Mustaine and uh, uh, several other artists, including Nikki Six. And you you were talking about when when I uh, talked to you about uh, working with um, uh, with Sam on some other projects. You you it sounded like you had something new going on. Can you tell us about this or? No, I wouldn't say there's anything new really in the pipes right now. And if there was, I probably shouldn't even bring it up. But but I can honestly tell you that there really isn't anything. I mean, I'm I'm keeping my hand in there. There might be some things I might be able to do with Banger TV. We're talking about uh, a little segment I could do there. Um, but otherwise, I'm I'm keeping my hand in there in uh, in just doing transcribing and stuff every mm. once in a while because I just find it so interesting. They're doing some cool stuff on. Um, you know the state of heavy metal in South Africa right now. Wow. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I suppose it's it's very similar to my whole book thing that if uh, you know it's not really my place to say what their projects are. Sure. Uh, sure. Especially if you know, I, I almost feel like, and, and this happens with the books as well. It's almost like I feel like I, I have to, I I probably should ask and say, is this a secret or not? Because you never know if it's a secret or sure. not, right? Well, we'll, we'll try so, to get Sam done on the show. I've I've, I've talked yeah, to him absolutely. numerous times. Absolutely, he'd have a lot to talk to you. Yeah, about. we could Skype him in, and he he's he's as, as people know with from Metal Evolution, he's done uh, terrific work. And from the the Headbangers Journey, I, I believe, which, which was his first uh, uh, documentary, which really. Uh, was amazing for Iron Maiden Flight 666 movie and the Rush uh, movie. Um, just just a fantastic documentarian. And of course, you know, you were uh, uh, and I could I, I could definitely see the Martin Popoff research, you know, coming out uh, through the through these movies because it is very, you know, and, and I remember you warned me on this. You, you gave me some real good advice when I started doing because uh, I had never done documentaries before when I started doing the Inside Metal. I was just starting to do interviews. And you said, you know, it, it, when it comes to, uh, you know, picking out, your, you know, you just have to keep going through hours and hours of material. And I know with a metal evolution, you probably had 100 times more footage than I had. But just, you know, going through 100 hours of footage, it is very, very time consuming, as you said. Yeah, well, I just interviewed uh, Penelope uh theorists recently right. um for they they just put out the decline of the of western civilization box set DVD, with all three movie extras and all that stuff and you know we we talked a little bit about because i was always interested did, did you transcribe all this stuff because transcribing is a huge part of that whole job and she said a no and then b you know because it was on a shoestring budget and it was not digital back then you would not you would not really um you would not really shoot nearly as much as we would now but you know with with sam i mean Basically, we could shoot uh, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours of footage and, and use two or three minutes. And Penelope was saying, basically, you know, they would shoot an hour and use 15 minutes. So right. there's a difference, right? Absolutely. I hear some fast music going, some speeded up music. Could we get another track there, Jake? I think we're, I think it's trying to tell me we're going to go into a break. That's what uh, the Chipmunks track means, <laughs> right, Jake? <laughs> we're going to do a break right now on the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. Very cool. And we're go who is this, Martin? Real quick. Turn it up, Jake. I know, you're IHE. There you go. You can't fool this, man. I'm telling you. Can't wait for the contest. Betty's Garage coming up in the last segment. We got one more segment before that, right, Jake? 
We're going to be back to Radio V Inside Metal with Martin Popoff. to see her ninny goats. He's like a bear. He's like a big bear, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we'll start. If you don't like the right pizza, go f yourself. <laughs> you never know who shun a shun 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 shun. Absolutely, Jason I think that my Stewart. show is better than yours. Yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, it is. No, no it's, it's not. Yes, it is. No, no it's not. not. The only thing that masks alcohol while you're driving is peanuts. Peanuts? Peanuts? Have peanuts. lots of <laughs> when you're drinking. It wouldn't be the first time Langdon had Skippy in his mouth. Isn't that your dog? He radioed me. Get in the car. Waka, waka, waka. Throw another log in the fire. It's not hot enough back here. T Radio V, Radio and TV. Ay, ay, ay! All right, T Radio V Inside Metal Show. Who is it, Martin? Ah, uh, is that Ted Nugent Death by Misadventure? Yeah, it's up. Did you say Ted Nugent Death by Misadventure? I think so. Yes, you did. I, I did. <laughs> Very no. good. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> I can't wait till this contest, dude. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna take the crown. <laughs> we uh, we made it a little bit more difficult for you because we had to because you are the professor, Martin Papa. So we're gonna well, get I'm to that. Embarrassed myself. We're going to get to that in the next section. So, uh, Martin, uh, I want to talk to you about this uh, book you got. And you, you sent me kind of an email sample. I didn't have to uh, have the time to obviously read. I, I, I quickly re read through uh, some of it. But who invented heavy metal? And this, we got to have a debate with my good buddy and our good buddy, Joel McIver. And uh, because I know he'll have a lot to say on this and we could uh, just go back and forth. So maybe next time we'll have you and Joel uh, Skyped in. Uh, to do yeah, well, it was quite okay. a project. I mean, I, it was basically 126 different speakers in it. It's uh, it's uh, it's 120,000 words. It starts at the beginning of time. It it actually ends in 1971, which is a little bit of a twist on the usual answer. I mean, the the answer obviously is Black Sabbath, but what I do with it is go past the first Black Sabbath album into looking at you know these crucial years. I mean, there's all. It, Basically, what I wanted to do is every single thing we always ever talked about as a dimension of that question is in there. And there's lots and lots of quotes supporting it all through the 60s. And it ramps up and up and up. Dude, you got then, biblical quotes in there. What's that? <laughs> you got biblical quotes in there. Oh, That's yeah. There's, there's I mean, all you sorts go of way, stuff. You, when you say you go way back, you go way back. I mean, you know, uh, 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 quotes about classical musicians, obviously Beethoven and, and Paganini and all these people that, you know, might have inspired the Blackmores and the Yngwies and, and some of the, you know, which later became known as, you know, prog music and, and so yeah. forth. Uh, but I mean, you really, uh, you know, as, as I say, as meticulous as you are, you go way beyond what any normal person would consider, you know, what is the, I guess, the origins of, of, of heavy metal music. 
Yeah, I mean, it starts with the horns of Jericho blowing down the walls in 1250 BC, but I mean, it quickly ramps up, and there's a lot of stuff about the first rock and roll song, which everybody knows, but what I did also in here is I chose the first heavy metal song, and it's from 1956. It's kind of like a landmark moment. And what is uh, that song? Well, what's that? What, what is that song, Martin? It's uh, the Johnny Burnett and his trio version of Train Kept a Rollin', which was written in 1952. And uh, I'm, I argue that the 1956 version has thrash, you know, it, it has a staccato riff. It's not very bluesy. It's got distortion. It's got a crazy vocal. It's almost as heavy, frankly, as the 1964 Yardbirds version. And then the song gets made more famous in a heavy metal context. Ten years Aerosmith. later, exactly yeah. through Aerosmith on "Get Your Wings," where mm -hmm. they where they cover "Train Kept a Rolling." So, but basically, you know, it, it it really gets serious with all of the usual suspects: your Blue Cheers and MC Fives and Iggy and the Stooges, or the Stooges, sorry. Um, and uh, and you know, it 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 you know, we look at Deep Purple in Rock as a very important album, Absolutely. and there's there's some really great quotes there about why in rock is such a heavy album, all in one place. And, you know, they answer the question much better than Black Sabbath does on why they're so heavy. Mm. But essentially, I, I went to the end of 1971 to prove, to, to, to sort of like uh, underscore the fact that Black Sabbath had the most intention in, in inventing heavy metal sure. because Deep Purple became one of those bands that, oh, we're a jam band, we're an underground band, we're a jazz band, and they move on and do Fireball where Black Sabbath even gets heavier mm. and makes Master of Reality. So by the end of 1971, Black Sabbath has made three very heavy metal albums and the question is answered. Yeah, well, I think so many bands, they, they uh, you know, uh, never admitted to being heavy metal. In fact, they tried to distance themselves as far as possible to the uh, term he heavy metal, as we know, everyone asked me that question. I mean, that that I mean, it's you know, it's it seems so irrelevant now, but it's it's people people who who do you think was the first heavy metal band? Who who was with you know? And it's something that's on so many people's minds, you know, uh, young people as well, uh, uh, mostly young people. And it's uh, uh, funny that people that didn't grow up in that era in the '70s, how people despise the term heavy metal. I mean, Black Sabbath never considered themselves heavy metal, nor did Deep Purple, nor did Zeppelin despised it and even bands like motorhead who essentially you know you would you would think were, were the uh, kings of which ushered in the new wave of british heavy metal really the only band that actually embraced it that i could recall in, in the beginning was judas priest and i yeah. remember and Motorhead's crazy i mean motorhead oh we're a blues band yeah. we're just a blues band you know i mean they're, they're the worst at it i mean black sabbath's a bit like that as well led zeppelin's more oh, hoity -toity. Too. oh we do everything great right yeah yeah so uh yeah it's it, it's a funny argument and then and then really also you know there's a lot addressed about who's the first heavy metal band well who's the first heavy metal album who's the first heavy metal song there's you can break it down to such small components and and to me uh you know one of the themes throughout the book is is the first heavy metal band has to be the band that made the first heavy metal album so i you know i want to see an album worth of, of material which which sort of proves intention um, and just as a sub note, I mean, another very important figure that people see, tend to forget in this whole thing is Jimi Hendrix. There's, there's a lot of stuff about Jimi well. moving to England when he records Purple Haze, when Purple Haze comes out. You know, that's a very heavy song to come out early on. So he is really one of the personages who, well, who I think back in the day when I remember the term heavy metal being used a lot of people use that to hinder I mean the, the, the point it was a um, a, uh, a term that was not well favored uh, it, w it was basically a term uh, meaning noise that Br British uh, I don't know if it's uh, uh, well probably American journalists I believe uh, you know the, uh, what was it Rolling Stone back in uh, uh, yeah, they, so there's a whole line of that about Bob. Alice like, Cooper. Uh, it was used in an Electric f Flag re review. It was used in a Humble Pie review of right, one of their Humble very Pie not I heavy albums. Yeah, yeah. It was used by Metal Mike Saunders. It was used Alice by Cooper, uh, Lester yeah. Banks. So it's right. slowly. Yeah, but it was always a negative connotation, especially with Cream. They hate it. And it, what it was, it wasn't even a term uh, of music. It was a term of the the sound oh this is just heavy metal garbage you know this is, yeah. so you could have, you know say a band like queen you know uh, this was you know a bohemian rhapsody a beautiful you know song whereas stone cold crazy was just heavy metal trash and that's how the term heavy metal was used it wasn't used as a genre <laughs>
we also have to remember that that basically um, it was used kind of in a random, accidental way in, until really about 1972-73, where finally it started solidifying it as actually referring to something. I hear music going on, Jake. Does that mean we're going on the break again? <laughs> All right. He likes to sneak that in there. Looks like we're going on the break, our final break of the, uh, and we're coming back with Betty's Garage. You ready there, Martin? Betty's yeah. Garage Contest? Bring it on, he says. All right. We're going to do our final break and uh, back Inside Metal, T Radio V with Martin Papa. Hey, my fellow thoughters out there. I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a thought starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio in TV. And it's uh, Mary Carey, of course, politically naughty with Mary Carey. I'm always naughty. I'm always politically. My behavior is always politically, politically naughty. naughty. I'm never politically correct. Dr. Dr. Drew, Drew hi. <laughs> oh, I'm so guys, how are you? It's all teary-eyed, doctor. I know. She wishes she could live at rehab. <laughs> but only if Dr. Drew's there. Obviously, sure. plus one, like, you know, because a little too groping might be inappropriate, but I like the flirting. Well, and stuff. When I, when I, I walked in, know. you shoved my head in your No! <laughs> Are you going to sue me? <laughs> Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Andy D on T Radio V. Bing, bang, bing, bing boom, boom, right? Yeah. Andy D on T Radio V. Bobbity, bibbity, bobbity, boom. Andy D on T Radio V. The Andy Dick Show, Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Wow! But we'll do it. We'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no. I'm Zoe Williams, and I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown, and we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on tradiov.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh, and if I get a chance, I'll help you change or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? <laughs> hey, back there mumbling. To them. To them. Peter, to lead us into this final segment of the Inside Metal Show on T Radio V with my very, very, very special guest, Mr. Martin Popoff. Skyped in from Canada. What's going on, Martin? <laughs> doing, doing well, Bob. Very cool. All right. We're, we're, ready to it. Let's go. All right. We're, we're getting ready to do the Betty's Garage. That, of course, is our metal trivia, our Name That Tune metal trivia contest. And uh, Martin, as I mentioned, is the metal professor. So um, we ramped it up a bit, uh, made it a little bit more difficult. We uh, used, I think, a couple of tunes that were on previous episodes, but hopefully you haven't seen those. I think you've only seen one or two episodes, right, Martin? I, uh, I just some of the clips you sent me, yeah. Okay, so hopefully uh, you, you, won't, uh, you won't have seen it. But either way, I think you're going to get them. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. We'll start the first track there, Jake. You all set? You all set, Martin? Song number one. I know you okay. know it. You've heard I it. I absolutely know every note of this song. Uh, <laughs> do a lot of riding. Take a guess. You got five seconds. Oh. New wave of British heavy metal. Okay, it's more. It's more from Blood and Thunder. Absolutely correct. <laughs> but what's the song? <sighs> Opening track. She took off her chains now. 
Something on the run on, on the, the prowl. prowl. On the prowl. Killer on the prowl. Absolutely. Do you ever yeah. notice on the uh, sound? You know, we did on uh, with uh, Chris Aiken and Neely from the Classic Metal Show. We did a whole thing about uh, riffs that sound similar. Bands that, whether it was either plagiarism or if it was random. Uh, yeah. And do, have yeah. you you know Saxon's song uh, "Eagle"? The Eagle has landed. Oh yeah. Absolutely same riff but slow down from killer. Oh yeah, I can I can hear that in my head. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I know we're going to end up running out of time, so let's get right into track 2. Torch has make it difficult. I can't hear you, Martin. This is... Okay. Bass dancer? No. Uh, boy. That is so that is so weirdly hard and it's glammy. Probably I some, really don't I'm, know that stuff. I'm pretty sure I'm trying it was to pick it up by the sound, but I'm pretty sure it was covered in one of your ye old metal books. We're talking late seventies, very, very underrated prog rock band. This is one of their heavier albums. Great album. Dang. Doesn't sound like Kansas to me. No, very underrated guitar player. The whole band was City Boy? Say what? City Boy? No. No, not no. that underground. They were actually huge huge at the time. Sounds like Hounds. Hounds? Nope, nope. No. Um, uh, they would, uh, they they would uh, headline arenas in the, uh, I would say, uh, mid to late seventies. Wow, and you're sure I, I stuck them in the book? I eh? believe you, you definitely know this band. Oh my God! I think Nelson. Not not sticks. <laughs> um, Nelson Nelson like BC? No, just no. Nelson. Nelson, like Ozzy Nelson, like like as the in, Nelson as brothers? in the last name of the guitarist. Oh, man! Come on, I don't know. I'm stumped. Bill, Bill Nelson, Bebop oh, Deluxe. Bebop Deluxe. Yeah, no, I never included them. I, oh, I really did. don't know that band very well. That's so. a great album, Futurama. I believe the song. Yeah, Between the Worlds from the future. That's that's well, a very heavy album. For I any, love that band. I'd like to explore them more, but I don't really know them. You know, well. I'm not a big fan of that, but that album Futurama is fantastic for even, even metal fans. I think would enjoy that. Yeah. So we, I we don't gotta, have a chance again now. <laughs> yeah, we got to get into the next song. So let's okay. do it. Martin's got a beer. I want a beer. All right, Martin. I'm drinking. I'm drinking a cooler, believe it or not. <laughs> not a beer. You know what? No idea. Really? That, that, that's a tough one. I told you I was going to make it hard for you. That yeah. was actually Lizzie Borden from the Appointment to Death album, oh, yeah. but that was Jonas Hansen playing lead guitar on that. So I really know nothing about Lizzie very much. I mean, I met him once. Brian Slagle had us to, you know, we, we went to an, uh, a Kings game. It was great in the box, had the family there. He brought Lizzie along. It was great meeting him. I've met him one other time, but actually guy. never, I don't even think I've interviewed him before. Really? Great, great albums. That was a particularly a great album, his last album. Uh, he had a lot of great guests uh, on that, Appointment for Death. So we're making it difficult for you, Martin, as I told you. Let's get into the next song, Jake. No vocal. Ah, <laughs> no vocal. You know, I have no idea. I don't even believe I, I if I've heard that oh, before. It this only is a groundbreaking a band. I'll tell you, the vocal was in a different language. 1980. Okay, vocal in a different language. 1980. So that could be Trust, Sorlage, Baron Rojo. Nope. But you're on, you were on the no. right track. We're on the right track. Um, 
You were when you were <sighs> mentioning some French bands. H bomb? Nope. Uh, trust Sortilage, H bomb. Um, Think about the C's, this the seven C's. The se Oh, TNT. No. <laughs> TNT album? No, no. Uh, no. I'm just saying. Uh, it's not, it's not a river. It's not a lake. It's an ocean. There you go. Ocean. Oh, man, you are killing me. These are tough. <laughs> I, I know very little about ocean. Oh, but dude, I, that I, that I debut them. album is absolutely groundbreaking. I mean, production-wise, for 1980, one of the Sounds... heaviest guitar and drum tones. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Wow. The first album, self-titled Ocean album, Own It, a all-time classic. See, Martin? I, 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 I told you I would make it tough for you. Cool. You're putting it at a great level. You got any more? <laughs> yeah, we do. Let's do the next okay. one. Oh, you know this. Oh, it just keeps going on and on. 70s frog rock. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, hey, Armageddon. Yay! There you go. Paths and planes and future gains. What right. a classic. 1975. Album. Yeah, classic, classic debut album. Love that album. Cool. Was so ahead of its time. Yeah, and unfortunately, only did that one great album before uh, uh, Keith Ralph's uh, uh, tragic demise. Yeah, I interviewed one or two guys. I, I considered almost doing a UO metal chapter on that, but I didn't quite have enough. Very deserving, I believe. So yeah. let's get into the next song, there, Jake. Hey. You know where the music's going? We can't hear your uh, voice. Go ahead again. As with Kentucky Fried Blues? Yeah! Speaking of killer riffs and great guitar tones, Manny Charlton, Kentucky Fried Blues. Very good. Very good, Martin. Next song, Jake. That distinct metal voice. Man, I'm going to need a hint on that. All right. Uh, you know, classic thrash band. One of the top U.S. thrash bands. Okay, stop there. Let's see if I could figure this out. Um, metal Church? Nope. No? Um, boy. It kind of throws you for a loop because it's a special guest guitar player on that track. Yeah, it huh. is. It is John Bush on vocals, Anthrax King Size, and that of course is Dimebag Daryl doing the lead on that one. Wow. Okay. On the Stomp cool. 442 album. See, oh, okay. dude, I'm making it tough for you. John Bush album. Yeah. <laughs> we got three more songs, so let's yeah. get right into it. Yeah. Love this. One of my favorite riffs. Yeah, I do know that. Favorite um, guitar riffs. It's not Riot, is it? No, no. No. Although I believe this band actually covered a Riot song on their first album, believe it or not. Oh, man. I do know that. Sorry, man. I need a... I, we, I need we, a were, we were going... Uh, we, we, we did a... Uh, a track from a band that's very from that same era, from that same country. Oh, different okay. language. <laughs> it's not Sortilege, is it? No, but right in oh. there, and just one of the one of the most monstrous metal riffs. Nineteen eighty three album. Oh, warning! Warning! There you go. 
There we go. Yeah. Fire, yeah, they fire. were probably the best French band other than, you know, the fact that that Sortilege album came out in English. That's probably the best French album. Right. But the and Warning album is great. That Warning album and production-wise, uh, musicianship-wise, just what an incredible, incredible band. Yeah. That riff right. from 1983, just yeah. way ahead of its time. That whole album, yeah, the production's great. Wall to wall, great album. I wish it would have come out in English. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's go next song there, Jake. Budgie Hammer and Tongs? Oh, well, the, the first part, Zoom right? Club. Zoom Club. Zoom Club. There you go, Budgie. <laughs> that is good. That's good right there. We got one more song. Last song. Let's do it, Jake. We got it. There we go. Oh, come on. That vo Even John Five got this when we had John Five as a guest. He knew yeah, the guitarist and band. I'm thinking right, like <laughs> Witch Cross, Witch Killer. Uh, who, come on, who plays guitar like that? 1983. Uh, Steeler? Yes. Steeler, okay. Steeler Ingrid. with Ingrid Melvstein, of course, from their debut yeah. album. And it the song Hot On Your Heels. So, Hot on your heels. Wow. Yeah, heels. three or four wow. loop there. You did good. You did that was, good. That, I, was, it, that it, was tough. That was almost perfect, you know? Because <laughs> I'm getting a few and I'm not getting a few, you know? See, you it's, know, we, like, we think a lot of the same lines. So I knew exactly what level had to I had to do this to to make it difficult for Martin Popoff. I had to keep John Bush as the leader here, as the king of Betty's Garage. <laughs> so I made it a little tough. Right. So we got to wind this. We match with us both there. Yes, well, we're going to do it. We're going to do a big match. We're going to do that on the the next time around but right now we we got to uh, close this off i want to make sure people could uh, order your books so go ahead throw out your websites and everything and let people know how they could get your books and uh, everything else yeah i'm at uh, www.martinpopoff.com uh, every book is there there's a full explanation picture of the cover paypal buttons for whatever territory you're in um, i mail them out i sign them um, but yeah, every book is there uh, in a big long row. There's there's reference how to get to those, uh, you know, the all of the ebooks that are on on full length. But also, you know, as we spoke earlier, there's all these 98 cent ones where these are these one album things that we've done on Yield Metal. So yeah, MartinPopoff.com. Absolutely, I know they're available on Amazon and and at a lot of bookstores. I've seen your books in several bookstores. So once again, my great guest, Mr. Martin Popoff, support this man. He's uh, the metal professor and one of my favorite authors. Thank you so much for being a part of this show, Martin. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. This has been fun. Absolutely. A little kill the king to end this show here. All right. Thanks again, T Radio V, Inside Metal. Right. We'll see you next week. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio and TV.